Hi there guys. Right, um, I'm going to set you up with a project on light now. Now, um, science generally is a really good subject to come up with project work for. Uh, my own kids are doing some project work on football and chocolate, and um, when I'm there, we can actually do some practical work with those things. But it's really hard coming up with science projects for you guys when I can't show you stuff in the same way. I can't be there to make sure it's safe. But that's why we're going to do a project on light, because there's very little way you can, you can get into trouble doing and I can show you some things through video instead. And one big reason for doing this is I love projects where there's a careers link and I love projects where there's an art link. Um, it's good for all of us to do something artistic, to do something creative while we're in lockdown. It helps us feel better about ourselves. So I had fun creating some of the little bits of video that I'm showing to you here. Um, it's, it, it, it brightens your day a little, a little bit. So um, that's why we're doing this project on light. Now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to try and find out as much about light as you can um, and as with the other projects you can choose the topic headings that you choose to focus on um, but I would like you to use the topic headings of refraction and also careers. Now I'm going to set you up with some work helping you with refraction and I've got some resources to help you out with careers. I'm also going to help you out with some stuff to do with colour so I'm going to talk you through some of those different bits now. Now when it comes to refraction you'll be able to find lots and lots of videos online, I've got some links for you, which will give you details of what refraction is and how it happens. What I'd like you to do is to draw me some diagrams showing how it happens, and you will need a ruler or something with a straight edge in order to do them. If you guys have got a protractor, um, then it will help you with this, but you don't need a protractor for it. If you haven't got a protractor, it's a really good bit of kit to get. They're not expensive. They come with lots and lots of kits. Um, so have a look through, create some diagrams showing what's there. Now, in terms of the artwork, what I'd like you to do is I would like you to use refraction in a piece of artwork. Now, that artwork could be something you've drawn, or it could be something you've photographed, or it could could be something that you video recorded. Now, I just went out in the rain in order to take some of the video that I was using. Um, be very careful with your phones and cameras if you're going out in the rain, but there is an opportunity to do stuff in the rain that you won't get when it's actually dry, because you will get droplets of water. So I've got some examples of things you can show in raindrops. Now, if anyone's able to create any images like this, that would be absolutely fantastic. And one of the reasons I want you doing this project is I've done similar things with students before, and I've stolen their artwork. OK, no, they let me have it. But um, I've taken their artwork with me when I've moved from school to school, because it's nice to have some really inspiring things to show future students. So maybe some of the things you create will be things that I'll show to students in the future. So yeah, I'd like you to take a photo or some video or even better some drawing. Now I've included a link to some artwork, it's for much younger kids than you, where what it suggests then doing is they draw some sort of cartoon picture and then take a photo through a glass. You can do that if you'd like to. What I've done is something with a flower. If you are going to do something with flowers, um, then you need to get permission from the person you're getting the flowers from. Um, I've used a geranium because we've got utterly, we've got hundreds of those things in our garden and it's not going to cause any problems. But don't go stealing them out of gardens without asking your parents, first of all. Don't go down to the park and just rip up flowers that, that have been lovingly planted by volunteers. Think very carefully about what you're doing and can you do it without causing any damage to plants. So the obvious thing is go into your, if you've got a back garden, Go into your back garden, ask someone at home, is there anything where you can just take a little bit of a plant and try using it? And something brightly coloured tends to work, work better. But you might come up with something better. You might come up with something that you want to show instead with refraction. Um, I've shown a video with a coin that's the traditional way of doing this. You'll see some videos of people putting pencils into water so you can see that they appear to, appear to be bent. But I want you to let your imagination run riot with this one. Um, what would be even better is if you were to have a go at sketching it or drawing it yourself. And really take your time. Um, there's, there's no rush at the moment. There's no rush in creating something like this. So I'd much rather something that does genuinely look good rather than something you've rushed off in just a few minutes. Um, if you can do something with photography, if you can do something with video, that's brilliant as well. Okay, now in terms of the careers bit, I do want you focusing on careers because 
there's some areas of science where we'll say to people, oh, some of you might get a career in this particular area. Some of you might do a job in this area. When it comes to light, and particularly something called the electromagnetic spectrum, I know that one or two of you will definitely get a job in this area. And actually, quite a lot of you might at some point work in this area, even if it's not the whole of your career. And the reason there's so many careers connected with light is because light's a form of electromagnetic radiation, and we use electromagnetic radiation for communication. So if any of you are going to do anything to do with TV, radio, mobile phones, the internet, anything where we use communication, we use the electromagnetic spectrum somewhere, and that might be light. If you've got full fibre broadband, then we use light in order to get messages to your home. Maybe one or two of you would have jobs where you're rolling out full fibre broadband or you're installing it in people's houses or you're trying to write software where you're getting it working. Um, if you're talking about mobile phones, then that's something that uses electromagnetic electromagnetic radiation, um, uses radio waves and microwaves. Maybe some of you will be involved in rolling out 6G. You've heard about 5G, maybe you'll be involved in rolling out 6G or 7G when you're older. So if you're doing something on careers, um, then that's likely to be something that, uh, that is a career for some of you. Um, and in terms of a list of careers, I've got that on paper, but I've got several careers I've found where, where light is an important part or radio waves are an important part. I've got broadcast engineer, so that's someone working TV, radio, or maybe if you're like a more sophisticated YouTuber and you've got proper, proper camera people and editing and everything. Um, if you're an optician of any kind, if you're a dispensing optician, you're obviously using light. Um, if you're someone who's developing mobile phone screens for Apple, I found a job which is called the Display EE Architect, and you can find out about that one. If you are a radio communications systems engineer, and that's something where you might be doing that for a telecoms company, or you might be doing it for the military. So the British Army have engineers that work with IT. Um, you might be someone who's really interested in working in a museum or gallery, and conservators, those are people who make sure that the, the artworks uh, stay in good state for, for years and years and years, and they can be enjoyed by people in a hundred years, they have to know about light so they can protect the, their exhibits from the damaging effects of, of light. Um, telecoms engineers, uh, it's, it's a very, very common job. People who are coming in installing new systems in people's homes or working, working more generally in the community, you will have seen telecoms engineers at work. And I've also found some really exotic games designer jobs, people who are working in video games because people demand better and better graphics. And so having a really good understanding of how light works can allow graphics to look more realistic. Plus, there's a very good chance that some of you might be photographers or camera operators for the TV stations. You might get a job as a videographer, maybe capturing people's weddings. Or maybe you're an artist and you're a cinematographer working and creating movies that, that work amazingly. And apparently, Britain is number one for CCTV. We have more CCTV than any other country in the world. So we need, we need people to install that and work on that. Maybe you'll be a CCTV engineer. If you're not interested in any of those jobs, then I've suggested a whole load of others that are to do with waves, particularly sound waves, and there's lots and lots of similarities between light and sound waves. OK, now I said about careers, um, but actually it's really important for me to point out that there are loads and loads of things people can do as really serious hobbies. Now, there's a very good friend of mine who's involved in making movies. Um, now, these are not movies that make any money. Um, it, it's, it's something that's done as a serious hobby rather than something that is actually done for money. Um, and obviously, this particular movie, I can't show you this particular movie. It's obviously an 18. Um, but this is something that he and his friends have been involved in making. Um, he specialises in the soundtracks rather than the actual cinematography or filming. Um, but you don't have to have a job in an area in order to do it in a serious way and for it to be a big part of your life. So when I'm talking about careers, I'm also trying to encourage you towards really serious hobbies as well. And the kind of skills that are involved in making a movie will make you very, very employable. OK, now in terms of the artwork, I've created a little bit of artwork. I'm not a genius at all. Um, but what I've done is I've made some photos of a coin in a glass of water. Um, actually, 
If you don't have any plain glasses like this, this is actually a Nutella jar. Um, it's a good idea to go to your recycling, find yourself a jam jar or glass jar of some sort that you can use. They often work a lot better than the kind of glasses that we get. So as I said, this used to hold Nutella. Um, what I've also done is I've taken a photo of some um, geranium flowers in a glass of water. Now you can see the geraniums being bent um, or the appearance of the geranium being bent and smeared because it's in the glass. Interestingly, I've also taken the photo in the garden because I wanted to show you a few other things. Um, I've put it on a curved garden table and you can see that the curve of the garden table looks extremely odd through the glass because of the refraction. You'll also see if you look quite carefully that some of the raindrops that are actually on the glass are refracting some very strange things. You can see some little pink tinged raindrops or some green tinged raindrops because they're refracting they're refracting light at odd angles into the uh, in this case it's the the lens of the camera rather than into your eye. But see if you can capture some of that in your artwork. So yeah, like I said, I've got um, a glass with a coin. You can see two coins, but there's just one one coin in the glass. You can see um, in this case it's a flower either behind a glass and it's smearing as it's through a glass or you can see that the stalks of the uh, the geranium don't seem to connect actually with the flowers at the end that's because we're seeing them refracted through the the water you can see that the background doesn't join up in some way see what you can create that does something that, that I hadn't thought of right lastly you've seen some pictures of one of my guitars now I actually got this guitar off David Bowie before he died I'm going to show you a little picture of David Bowie and it's the back of his album Low which is a really good album now this particular guitar I've got a multicolored strap that is basically brought to, to celebrate celebrate pride um, so it's it's about respect for all people um, but if you are a rock star and you're appearing on stage generally stages are pretty dark until you put the lights on and you can make your stage look amazing with all sorts of colored lights now you can see my guitar is normally red it's got a white plastic scratch plate and it's got black neck and black pickups now what colours that actually going to appear under different lighting conditions? Is it going to be red under all lighting conditions? Is the plastic scratch plate, is that going to be white under all conditions? What colour is the strap going to look like on different lighting conditions? So let's say, for example, that I'm performing a moody song, or rather it's rock stars performing a moody song, and they've got sort of blue light on stage to make everything look really moody. Will the guitar still look red, or will it look rather different? Will the whole thing look blue? Or will it actually look rather dull and will some parts of it look black? So what I'd like you to do is to try and explain what's happening in terms of the different colours. Now, on the red bits of the guitar, what they're doing is they appear red because when light shines on it, they reflect the red part of the light back into your eye. The black parts of the guitar, they appear black because they absorb all the different colours of light and none of it's reflected back into your eye. The white parts of the guitar, they appear white because when light shines on them, they actually reflect all the colours of light back into your eye. Now, the white light that comes from light bulbs or the sun is actually made up of lots and lots of different colours. Now, we perceive it as white because all those colours are mixed together and they make white. You can obviously see my strap is multicoloured, it's got a red, it's got an orange, it's got a yellow, it's got a green, it's got a blue, and it's got a very dark colour at the edge, which I think is intended to be purple, but actually it looks black on the strap. So we can think about what colours will they appear. Now, so the red part looks red because it reflects light back into your eye and it absorbs all the other colours. Now, the... If we look at the yellow part of the strap, that's actually a bit more complicated there because when it comes to light, rather than talking about having yellow light, we just talk about having red light, green light and blue light. Now to get yellow colours, we actually mix together two different colours of light. We mix red and green light together. Now that might seem crazy because when you learn about paint, you learn about primary colours and you learn about red is a primary colour blue is a primary colour, but also yellow. But when it comes to light, yellow isn't actually a primary colour. Yellow is a mixture of blue and green, because the actual primary colours that are used in light are red, 
green and blue. Now, your TV or your mobile phone screen is able to produce lots and lots of colours by just changing the levels of red light, blue light and green light when and uh, what they're actually displaying. Um, and it's also the way in which your eyes work. Your eyes are able to detect different levels of red light, green light and blue light using parts of your eye. So they're, they're, they're basically cells at the back of your eye. And if you want to research those, you can do. Um, it's a bit more complicated than some of the other areas that you'll do. So I said yellow light appears yellow because it's reflecting back blue light and green light. So imagine I'm on stage and, oh sorry, rock stars on stage, and they've got blue light shining on them. What's the yellow part of their strap going to look like if there's only blue light? Well, it's not going to look yellow. If there's only blue light shining on it, it's going to reflect the blue light back. So it's going to reflect, it's going to reflect as blue. Now, other colours, like for example the red part of the guitar under blue light, there's no red light. So what's it going to look like? It's going to look black. Now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to have a go at explaining all those different bits to do with colour. Now, the bits with colour and lighting are very much more complicated to do than the other areas that you might look at. And they're particularly hard to do without me there to show you in a classroom. But you can give it a try if you want to do that as one of the sections. And obviously you can imagine doing a job. There'll be some people here who will want to do a job working in theatre. Some people who want to do a job working at music music festivals. Um, you could be providing. You're not the artist. You're not the artist on stage. But maybe you don't want to be on stage. Maybe you get stage fright. But you still love performance. You still love theatre. You still love music. Maybe you'd like to work behind the scenes. Um, one of my best mates actually works uh, uh, basically on this this job of lighting and sound at one of the local theatres. Um, I did that particular job within a school, um, not not at Sill Park, but in a previous school. Um, I was the theatre sort of. I, I was the guy doing all the lighting and the sound, or helping kids to do the lighting and the sound. And it's an absolutely fantastic job. It doesn't pay very well. But it is very, very interesting because you get to meet all these amazing performers. So there's the careers link as well. And wouldn't it be amazing if one of you went on to use some of those ideas when it came to your future life? OK, so as with the other projects, you're going to decide on the topic headings. Um, I've suggested that you might use shadows and eclipses as a possible topic heading, especially if you're interested in astronomy. You might look at mirrors and reflections. And if you want to do any mirror art, you can do. Um, if you want to look at the electromagnetic spectrum, that's great because it splits into several parts anyway. You could look at gamma rays, you could look at x-rays in medicine, you could look at ultraviolet radiation and how it causes sunburn and cancer. You could look at visible light and you can also look at infrared, you can look at microwaves and you can look at radio waves. Now, I'll mention very quickly, because there have been lots of concerns over microwaves, radio waves and 5G about whether it's dangerous. The fundamental thing is that your mobile phone is not very powerful. Your mobile phone is, is about 1% as powerful as a microwave oven. So even though your phone uses microwaves, it can't have a harmful effect on you because it's just not powerful enough. And when it comes to people worrying about microwaves and radio waves, microwaves and radio waves are nowhere near as dangerous as that regular light and also particularly ultraviolet light. So if you're worried about harm from your mobile phone or you're worried about harm from 5G, it's far less harmful than the light coming off the sun. So if you're outside and you're worried about the effect of mobile phone radiation, it's not as dangerous as the sun because there's more energy in ultraviolet radiation um, that, can, that can cause damage to your cells. We've got people have been working with microwaves and radio waves for decades and they show no additional health problems to ordinary people. So those things are safe. OK, guys, well, enjoy, enjoy your project. Um, I'm really, really interested to see what you can send me. And we're particularly looking for stuff that we can put on our put on the school website that we can celebrate in the end of term assemblies, because uh, it, it's been a pretty rotten end to the year. And we'd like to celebrate all the good things that people have done. OK, thanks very much, guys. Best of luck.